I'm sorry for the late start. We were had some miscommunications on when we were going to go live versus when other people were expecting to go live. Uh, that's the problem, of course, of any role playing group. You always get a bunch of people in and everybody has their own schedules and own lives. And this is a game. Don't take it too seriously. Sometimes more important things come up and you have to deal with it. Audio and captions are good. Excellent. Awesome. All right. So today's adventure, quite literally, is that we are going to play through a game that I planned last week. If you were here, if not, uh, you'll be able to catch that uh, uh, VOD on YouTube. Technically, you have one more day right now today if you wanted to actually look it up on Twitch. Um, but it'll be going live on YouTube shortly after today. Um, as I get all the captions and stuff sorted out. Um, but we are playing a Pathfinder second ed adventure, more specifically a Pathfinder Society quest, which are short little mini adventures, which are meant to be played in an hour. I'm not going to go into all the details about how, uh, Pathfinder Society adventures work. Um, but the long and the short of it is that they are standardized little standardized adventures that you can show up, play, bring your character to, and then get advancement points essentially that are universal across all games and all characters. Uh, so that you can be assured if you showed up at a Pathfinder Society game in, say, New York, and then the next week show up at a different one in LA. The same game rules apply. Everyone's character will be balanced to the appropriate points. So if you are level three and all the other people are around that level, you're not going to find one person whose GM has given them 300 magic items versus another person whose GM has given them nothing. Uh, you'll have a relatively even power base to deal with. So the games are still fun um, and exciting and interesting. And they have generally done a really good job of writing some interesting adventures. So let's get started on that one. Uh, to start with, we'll introduce the players. Actually, to start with, I will actually show my face. Hi, Hill. Here I am. I am on the internet and available. You can see me. So let's go ahead and introduce the players. We have our usual set of Motley crew, as it were. Um, so I will let them introduce themselves. Um, we'll go ahead and randomly start with uh, 20. Why don't you go ahead and start? Well, hello, everyone. Um, I'm 20. Uh, my pronouns are she and her. I am playing Whitaker, uh, who is a half-elf ranger. Um, and I haven't played her in a while, so I don't remember a lot about her. But there you go. Okay. Tony? Hey there. Hi there. Um, this is Tony. Uh, pronouns he, him. I am playing Nick Riggs, the bard. And the problem is I've been in like three or four different games and three of them I play bards. So I need to remember which bard this is. Bards are bards. I Unless you're playing, playing. A, a sad emo bard. Which, who plays a sad emo bard? Actually, no, don't say that. I know there are people who do. Uh, <laughs> Michael, go ahead. You're up Challenge first. accepted. <laughs> Goth rock. I am playing Hawkeye. I am the cleric. Uh, you might find me in, in such scenes as taking care of plants. I am a Lushy, after all. Root Lushy. Good times. But I try to keep everybody alive. That's, that's, that's my goal. And here to do the exact opposite, Martine. Uh, hi, I'm Martine. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I am playing Bax. I am a fighter. I have a wicked tail that I will snap you with if you annoy me. I also have a breath. I, I, and worst case, I'm going to breathe on you. And that's a lot more horrific than it sounds. Excellent. And because I didn't 100% introduce myself, I'm Mark DC. I am the GM, product owner, pronouns he, him. And I am the uh, product owner for Lorelink. I am the guy in charge of running all this craziness. And I am your GM today. So let's go ahead and get this show on the road since we are running a little bit later. So how this adventure begins off. All of you are members of the Pathfinder Society. 
And as low-level members of the Pathfinder Society, that pretty much means you're at the beck and call of whatever venture captain wants you in that day. So that is the reason why today you find yourself on the island nature of Jalamare, uh, in the capital city, in the capital city of Nisan. Uh, that's N-I-S-W-A-N. Uh, you are you have been summoned here by venture captain. And I apologize in advance, Rashi, Rashi Mivita uh, Melipidra. Uh, apologize in advance if I'm basically have basically having problems with names. Um, I will attempt to be as consistent as possible. Um, for those who are curious, which who's that one? What that one particular character looks like? Um, I can show you in a bit once I actually pull that up. Uh, in any case, you get summoned basically to the Pathfinder Society and basically the essentially the offices of the Pathfinder Society, and you get there and things are already in disarray. Um, there are basically agents and clerks and clerks, and they're all kind of running all over the place. Um, there are um, basically basically someone that basically everyone seems to have something in their hands, whether they're, it's getting, they're running to and from, and it takes you quite a few minutes to actually get someone's attention long enough to get you to get them to direct you to where the venture captain is. Um, you get directed deep inside the lodge um, to what basically the area known as the artifact vault. And it becomes quickly clear as you move towards that, that this is uh, the epicenter of the chaos that has happened here at the vault. Um, as you get closer, uh, you start to smell smoke. You see basically scorch marks on the walls. Um, and eventually you reach the door itself, which is, it used to be a heavy brass door um, inside the artifact vault of the lodge. Uh, basically the heavy brass door that protected the entrance lies charred and smoking in a folded heap as if blown, uh, blown from its hinges by an explosion. The floor of the large vaulted chamber is covered with debris, not unlike the aftermath of an earthquake. Broken, uh, broken and overturned shelves, diases, display cases, as well as scattered sculptures, paintings, and talismans litter the floor. A handful of society scribes carefully clean up the mess, sorting through relics while recording observations on scrolls of parchment. Amidst them, Venture Captain uh, Rashi Mivita uh, Melipidra, uh, a husky middle-aged Verandi, woman with broad shoulders kneels down to pick up one of the shards of shattered glass. Um, eventually she will look up, basically, to basically poking it. Basically she continues to kind of poke at it for a bit, and then she looks up and she just kind of sighs and says, ah, you would be the Pathfinder agents then, I assume. The ones that got sent to me for this particular mission. Gl gl glances around. Yeah, I, I guess that, that that yeah, I guess that's us. Yeah, as you can see, someone did a number on our artifact vault. We've been storing several historical artifacts here, owned by the Monastery of Unblinking Flame, as part of a standard agreement I negotiated. In exchange for curating these treasures, the monastery gave access gave the society access to its archives, trainers, and other resources. Unfortunately, someone burglarized our facility. That we did not have any idea it happened until two days ago when we suspected uh, that we didn't have any idea it happened until two days ago. We suspected a break-in occurred for a few weeks ago while I was away. Uh, several important artifacts are missing, including an ancient statue known as One Who Waits, which I happen to know is treasured deeply by several masters at the monastery. You'll know the statue when you see it. Heavy basalt sculpture of a monk meditating while sitting upon, atop a bed of flaming coals. I need you to track it down. Before, because if you do not, I fear our arrangement may, and pardon the pun, go up in smoke. Yeah, I see. Up in smoke. That would be bad. That would be bad. Indeed. Can you... <clears throat> Quickly repeat for me the the description of the item. Yes, it is a heavy basalt sculpture of a monk meditating while sitting atop a bed of flaming coals. The 
So is the item actually a flame? No. It merely okay. is, it is a sculpture. A depiction. It is a I depiction. See. Thank you. Not a problem. Uh, in terms of leads, I'm afraid we only have one, which hopefully is the correct one. If it is not, we will you will definitely have to spend more time searching. But we did receive a written message from the captain of a ship called the Obsidian Owl. Claiming a Vajrani woman exchanged a few historical relics in exchange for Patras passage to Vidisha, an island just northwest of here. Uh, if, or basically, because of the fact that he approached us, albeit somewhat indirectly, uh, we were able to figure out that the relics that he had was attempting to barter are, in fact, the same relics that which were stolen from here. Uh, minus the one who waits. So it appears that the one who waits would be the, was the uh, central, uh, basically the central part of the theft. Um, as such, since you did approach us, I have booked you passage on the Obsidian Owl to return to Vidisha. What you will find there, I do not know, but I suspect you will find uh, this is basically the source of the theft. Any additional okay. questions you have for me? What's the name of the place we're returning to again? On the Obsidian Owl? You're returning, basically, it is returning back to the island of Vedisha. Thank you. V D E D E E S H A. Is an island just northwest of here. There is not much to be found there. Except hopefully that the items that you've lost? Yes. Or that were taken? Correct. I'm for one. I'm happy to help you. Um, exactly. How 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 much risk are we putting ourselves in? I, I need to understand how. Should I prepare my soul? I have heard word that you have completed at least several missions already, um, including a bar fight and a oh. exploration of an ancient tomb. So. I suspect that whoever did this has some nature of power. Obviously, they it was the security was not heavy here, so it was not difficult to break into this vault. Most of the security relied on the fact that most people wouldn't attack a Pathfinder Society lodge, uh, occupied or empty, uh, occupied or empty. Uh, but they were at least able to do some damage in here, so. I suggest, if confronting the person, try not to get hit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, uh, I like that. Suggestion. Don't get hit. That's always that's always some very wise advice. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that I can help you do your job. And she seems basically she's got, she keeps kind of glancing at the the rest of the room, and she hasn't quite started tapping her foot yet, but she's at that point. Later. If you have no further questions, then I suggest you head to the docks. Thank you. Thank you. I hope to see you soon with the statue. Oh, of course. Should we, uh, as we wander away, should we get supplies? Probably. You know, if we're going to the docks, you know me and ships, it's... I, Yeah. I like my feet on solid ground. <laughs> well, hopefully <clears throat> we'll just be traveling over the water and then getting off. Unlike some of our previous work. Uh-huh. 
but yeah, supplies, whatever we need, I think we should grab. Uh, there will at least be a basically basic supplies are available to you. Um, food, water. Um, you're able to get those relatively easily here at the lodge. Uh, at no ridiculous, basically no large expense. Um, so you'll be able to pick those up. Anything outside of that, you would have to pay for. Yeah, I I could use a bottle of uh sunlight, but I don't I don't have the money for that. So basically, in terms of basically. It is a bright and sunny basically in terms of what you can eat. Uh, yeah. It is a relatively bright and sunny day out. So that's good. You are basically these are relatively I uh, once basically somewhat tropical type islands. Perfect. Uh, My leaves are quite perky. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um So basically you make your way to the ship then? Unless anyone else has something they wish to something unusual they wish to pick up at this point. Nope. I'm ready. No, I, I stretched my tail last night. It's not in elastic and ready for a Anything that might come. <laughs> did my did my uh, little s- t- tail? Uh, uh, I don't know. It's not tail like yoga. Tail, tail, tail yoga. Sanics. There we go. There we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ow! Ooh. You okay? I just got a static shock and it went right through my freaking earbuds into my oh, ear. No. Ow! Ouch! That's not good. I do. A little bit of shock treatment there. Ow! I didn't know my tail was that powerful. <laughs> Jeez, keep that to yourself! <laughs> <laughs> well done. I'm fine, but okay. ow! Yeah, understandable that you are... Uh... There we see. This is indeed a... Uh... Is Otto coming with us? Of course. Cool. So, as I note, the island of Java is actually an interesting sort of uh, mix of climates and things like that. So, while I did say it is nice and sunny, it is, in fact, a basically because of a cold, basically, a elemental cold being nearby it's actually relatively snowy in this area but the water there is the water not 200 feet away essentially is warm tropical uh, warm and tropical so it has been a uh day of contrast for you in any case you make your way to the boat uh where you'll find yourself meeting uh the captain who will introduce himself as let me get his name here. Uh, Captain Zizander Scarscale. Um, and so basically, he, basically, despite his name, um, he has no visible scars. Uh, but he basically greets you basically. He is basically basically Bax. This will basically he is in fact a lizard folk as well, and he's quite basically quite happy to see another of his kind here, and kind of greets you warmly. He's like greetings, greetings. Ah, good, good. You must be the Pathfinder. So basically, surprising to see so many of you, given that basically the unfortunate instance that happened a while ago. Uh, there was that war with Tarbafon. But that's over now. That's over now. It looks like you've replenished your numbers and even added some of the best, some of the best people. He kind of basically, obviously, looking at backs and kind of nodding and saying, "Yes, yes, very good to see. Very good to see that many, basically, that 
the Pathfinders have decided to take things seriously and are recruiting fearsome warriors to join them. Um, it, 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 he's like, so, let's be, your, let's be, your quarters are below. It will take you approximately five hours uh, to get from here to the islands. We will wait... Uh, Basically, we will probably wait another basically till the end of the day, as it were. This is early in the morning. Um, if you are not back at that point or have not sent some kind of message, I am, I am afraid that my crew uh, will have to push back out on the outgoing tide, as it were. <clears throat> so do not tarry too long on the island. Very good. Wouldn't want to get into trouble. Basically, he turns and basically he turns and says, "All right, you seem to have everyone aboard. There's just all of I assume this is all of your all of your men, all of our uh, people. Yes, yes, yes. I'll leave you humanoids. Present company excluded. Look alike. <laughs> Present company excluded." Whitaker just, just looks at I'll, the leshy, her exactly. half elf self, the one exactly. human, she and left. the lizard folk in her party, and her bear, and <laughs> just looks back at him like, "Are you for real, homie?" <laughs> and like, almost that's in just response, on her face, and almost in response to, it, he says, "Now we must leave." And of course, let, wait, let me check. Wait, wait, parrot, parrot. He shouts a couple times, and then a white furred ferret scampers up, and the Vinsky and the Vinsky kind of perches, ends up perching onto his shoulders. He's like, "Ah, oh, there you are. What to make sure you were aboard." Now we have all the important people. We can leave, and he just walks off at that point, scratching a ferret's. So, wait, so he has a, a ferret that he named Ferret, Parrot. but also. Oh, it is named as in... Parrot, as in the bird. Yes. Like the time I had a dog named Kitty. I'm so confused. I was great seeing you standing there staring afterwards. One of the, one of the other ship's crew members uh, will kind of wander by and said, we told the captain at one point he should get a uh, ship's pet named Parrot. I mean, rather, we told him he should get a, he should get a ship's parrot. He didn't hear us correctly, and so got a ferret instead. But we corrected him and told him, no, you should get a parrot. He just promptly named the ferret Parrot and moved on. We're not 100% certain whether or not he's just running with the joke or if he truly doesn't understand. And he's a good enough captain, so we don't push him it's... on it. What, what, does, does he have? She looks around to make sure he's not nearby, and then she says... Oh, he's up by his camp on the, the main deck, by the wheel. Are, are you sure he doesn't just have a hearing problem? Uh, he seems to he, he seems to have a pretty keen ear whenever any of us are getting into trouble, so... As far as I'm aware, he hears quite well. Huh. I mean... Okay. I'm not sure what passes for hearing problems amongst the lizard folk. He kind of looks over at Bax... Hard to tell. I don't have exactly very prominent ears. That's a fair point. Bax, do you have anything to say? Uh, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> just curious. All right. Uh, anyway, each, each lizard's um, experience is different. That makes sense. If it's gonna go, you guys just let's go sell your stuff over there on the deck. Um, let's go, he gives you basic directions to the ship. Um, if you need, if give you need a room below deck, hey, basically, there is a common room down below. Um, since you're only on the ship for five hours or so, it is not expected that you need a uh room to yourself, no. individual rooms to yourselves. Um, as soon as you start to leave the shores, the weather immediately changes and basically goes back to being its normal tropical warm self. Um, uh, 
Um, but the rest of the crew kind of like we kind of goes about their business. Um basically as you get closer to the island, unless someone is doing something in particular during the voyage. Um, as you get closer to the voyage, yeah, as you get closer to the island, uh the captain will basically come basically come back and inform you that you are uh basically approaching the island. And he'll kind of lean over the railing and just kind of shake his head and say, she was, even for you, basically even for your types, uh, a strange one. Uh, basically, she always basically wanted to be called Master Sarvana. Uh, I'm not quite sure what she considered, she considered herself a, uh, a master of. Um, but... Uh, she very definitely had one large piece of cargo that she needed to tra need to transfer and paid well enough. Uh, I even I could easily recognize those relics as something worthwhile. Shame it turned out to be stolen, but eh, that's the that's the problem you get into in this business. I've done enough artifact hunting and things like that, so relatively easy to figure out exactly where it's basically whether it's whether or not something is someone is giving you is a genuine genuine but not their property or just fake of whether or not they know it's fake or not but in any case the the artifact she handed over seemed genuine enough so i figured nothing else i could trade it for a favor from whoever she stole it from and indeed got me in contact with you Nice. Uh, another crew member will kind of wander by and be like, "Oh yeah, I remember her. He, uh, he's that. Uh, basically, uh, she was uh, one of the fighters at the challenge of Sky and Heaven. Very. That's great. But I was on the uh, on leave a little bit ago and managed to catch one of those competitions." It's it's an inter really interesting kind of kind of a fight where it's the various groups and other types kind of battle for represent, representing their own monastery. It's it's quite an impressive challenge set. Uh, many many different groups and monasteries show up. I believe she was there as the the monastery of unblinking flame. I want to say. It seems like the I think that's the name that stuck in my head. Didn't do too well. I mean, it was a decent showing, but didn't win. Um, as a note, basically, you may or may, basically, may or may not remember Monastery of the Unblinking Flame is uh, the monastery who the uh, Pathfinder Society had been uh, storing the relics for. Got it. So she, just to make sure I'm Grokking all this. She was representing the monastery who is now employing us to go get the relic back. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, actually, wait. No, wait, wait, turn me off exact. She went out in the first round, that's right. Huh. Who did who's that that be? Oh, it was one of those newcomers, one of the, the monastery of unbreaking waves. I mean to be honest, now that I think about it, yeah, that's right. Uh, kind of embarrassing for her. I mean, didn't want to add, basically didn't want to mention it while she was on board because she looked a little angry, just in general. One of those people that just has resting angry face, as it were. But, uh, yeah. Didn't do too well in the tournament. Lost first round to a relatively new school monastery. Well, apparently they're still employing her if she was transporting artifacts for them. <laughs> kind of wanders back yeah. off. 20 mm. will exchange a glance with the members of her crew. <laughs> like, hmm. <laughs> I mean, Whitaker. Uh -huh. I'm 20. Whitaker will exchange yeah. the glance. <clears throat> uh. Interesting. Guess they'll just hire anyone. Okay. Uh, Whitaker will comment very quietly. 
you know, anybody can be betrayed by somebody. Uh, fair. All right. So they take you uh, to uh, basically the coast of the island of Edesha, um, which the captain will explain used to be uh, a wealthy trade center. Uh, but once the island of uh, Jalmare basically kind of took over as the predominant power in the area and Nissan, 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 Nissan uh, became its capital. It's one of those things where they basically the trade winds were easier and everything was nicer. Um, and so everything slowly shifted over time from Vedisha to Niswan, leaving a ghost town in its wake, as it were. Um, and where they end up pulling ashore looks to have been a really nice uh, structure at some point, made of bas basalt and limestone, um, a nice pagoda. Um, made up with that with thatched bamboo, um, and basically it looks it looks like it has basically a massive uh courtyard. Looks like it basically it also has several different um uh, basically several different um rooms and chambers and other things like that. It's kind of a spreading building, and it actually pull up on a set of docks, um that are uh, basically in disrepair, but looks like they've been repaired somewhat in order to make them at least usable. Um, but the repairs are definitely far newer than the rest of the docks. Um, and they're mostly hanging together at this point. Um, everyone can give me a religion check. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Where the heck is that? We'll contemplate some religion. In the middle. Yep, the dice are treating me as well as they normally do today. <laughs> can, you, can you do a religion on trained? Um, you can. It's going to be difficult. Or rather, this particular piece of knowledge would be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apparently, <be> yes. <laughs> yes. So, Difficult. like, Hawkeye is looking over things and is kind of looking at basically trying to imagine the building without its plant structures and things like that, and is focusing on particular architectural structures and patterns and things like that. You're slowly kind of piecing together a picture of what it used to look like. You're like, I'm fairly certain this was a temple, and I'm uh, fairly yeah, yeah, certain yeah. I see it. I see it. that it was for, and just as you're about to finish... Bax just chimes in with Iori. Yeah, it's right there. You can see the holy symbol right there. And everyone just kind of stops and <laughs> stares. <laughs> you happen to see a holy symbol of Iori at some point, and for some reason it's stuck in your head. Iori, basically, for those who don't know, um, basically I-R-O-R-I, -R -R -I, while having a confusing sounding name, um, is essentially the god of monks. Enlightenment, self-perfection, knowledge, healing, inner strength. Um, absolute, basically, he, basically, he used to be a, a mortal who essentially achieved physical and mental perfection and then became the, uh, the divinity because of that. Uh, fairly powerful local, basically, basically deity in the local region. Its holy symbol is, in fact, just an open palm. So it is, in fact, not that difficult once you actually see it. Um, but <laughs> basically, they tend to be warriors and fighters, so it's not too much of a surprise that the, the basically the lizard the lizard folk fighter would recognize it. But so, um, we just goes. Oh, I didn't see that there. Good, good observation. Yeah, yeah, good, good spot. Way to catch the details. Um, so, you basically he will basically kind of indicate that she collected the basically collected the sculpture, 
uh, or whether what you what you are assuming to be the sculpture was a fur wrapped, uh, basically large, uh, let's see, large large item, uh, and carried it off the basically off the ship and into the temple before disappearing out of sight. His men will essentially set up. Several of them will start fishing off of one end of the boat. <clears throat> well, they they indicated an entrance to us. They will basically. There is a basically. There is a front. Basically, it is a large temple complex, and it's fairly straightforward about how you can get into it. Um, the dock leads into. Um, what is likely to, uh, is a main entrance of it. Um, All right. Looks like it's leading into a courtyard. Shall we? Sounds good I, to me. I will lead the way, I guess. Okay. Does it look like we... Well, as we're traveling in through the entrance, um... Wit will be looking around for potential ambush spots and or traps. Okay. Go ahead, and everyone can go ahead and give me perception checks. I'll go in last. Not in any hurry to die. Perception? We just click perceive, right? Yep. Yeah. Perceive the things. Oh, that's right. It's not actually in the in the uh, skills. Yeah, it's got its own little box. Yep. yep. I'm still looking. Right All side. the way to there. The it right. is. <clears throat> so. Basically, as you poke around, as you come into this area, you will um, relatively quickly discover um, that this basically this temple has been long abandoned. Um, but confirming its status as a basically kind of a monk type temple, um, it is very definitely basically it has like the courtyard is full of basically un basically disused athletic equipment at this point, rust kind of rusting away in the center. Um, basically, you can find you'll basically kind of poke your way through multiple chambers. Um, backs you will discover as you go, obviously, as you make your way through, um, that the largest bedchamber, um, has a set of stairs going down, uh, that look to be much better conditioned than everything else in, uh, -uh. Basically everything else in here. I will flag the crew to um, point them towards the stairs and be like, look, at, look at what I found. Ain't it cool? You should check it out. You really are observant today. Well done. <clears throat> Why, yes, it's a room. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> check out those walls. Yeah. I will carefully go down the stairs. Um, I'm a fighter, so I'll be checking for traps with my face, but I will try to keep an eye out open with it. Okay. Um. Okay. And basically, so what is the order that people are going down the stairs in? And secondly, um, who is carrying any, or basically, it is relatively dark as you start to head down those areas, so who is carrying uh, light sources, if anyone? I'd say Nick is probably carrying one, because most of what he does is vocal anyway, so. I don't have dark vision, I don't. No, the, uh... you have normal vision. The only person who has um, you have some low light visions for Hawkeye would be casting light on the end of a staff. Okay. I mean, since I'm in the front, I'm guessing I have a torch of some kind. 
Okay. Maybe we put, <clears throat> maybe we put uh, Hawkeye behind Bax so that the staff will cast light for Bax. Oh, that's a good idea. And then um, Whitaker and, and um, Otso can take up the rear just in case. Um, Because is it me that has a little bit of low light vision? As a half and Hawkeye. Elf? Hawkeye definitely remember. does. I don't believe that you do. Okay. I couldn't remember but... if half elves had it. I trust you. <laughs> Dangerous. All right. I so... mean, you only know this stuff like better than me eight times over and backwards. It's merely experience. Um, in any case, uh, so Bax is leading the way, followed by who again? I so guess Nick. No, Bax, then um, Hawkeye, then Nick, then Whitaker and Os Osto uh, Otso. There we go, what 20 said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Getting everything set up. What's the light radius on light? Do you know at the top of your head? Is uh, it just twenty yeah, feet. Twenty feet radius. Okay. And then dim for the next round. So basically a torch deck. Nick has one. The vision is set up correctly. Ouch. And now that that's done, with that we will move over. Oops, that's the wrong way. Take the player, not the Take the flag, not the map. All right, you shall all see a corridor at this point. Or see a room, rather. Everybody, does everybody at least see? Yes. Okay. I see I'm, a, I'm on the new map. A bit of a space. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you shouldn't see too much, but. Um... Mm -mm. Yeah, it's no longer the adventure cover. Yes. I see a sliver of a window. Okay. I see a little silhouette of a man. <laughs> Scaramouche, Scaramouche. That's twice we've brainwormed each other so far today. <laughs> you missed the first one, Mike. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate. I could sing it for you if you'd like. Nope, I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so. Um, you find yourself um, in essentially a basically on the second basically you're in a uh, entryway for the lower level of the temple. Um, basically, it has doors that lead north. Uh, actually, wait, did they? Uh, let me double check something. They love changing. No, no. Okay, that's what they're talking about. Okay. I had to double check the compass because Paizo loves putting maps in which are not uh, direct. So there are doors that lead to the north, the south, uh, the southwest, um, and a large brass double doors that lead to the east. Um, Everyone could go ahead and give me perception checks. I will not be first into the room. Whitaker's on it. 
Vax got distracted. Your focus was shiny doors, wasn't it? <laughs> Vax is focused on making sure there are no traps or anything like that, and so is 100% focused on that. Is currently examining a loose stone, of, basically a loose uh, basically a floor tile right now to make sure it isn't actually a trap, and rocks it back and forth, looking to see if it sets an arrow off or anything. Um, Whitaker, um, as you start to come downstairs, um, you will start to hear, um, just kind of faintly, uh, you can hear the echoing noises of basically what sounds like all the world to you, like martial training. Um, someone basically kind of like, yeah, crack, yeah, oh, hit harder, more light bright, keep your hands straight. Basically, you can faintly hear that. Basically, just kind of between everything else and everyone kind of talking and scuffing as they come down the stairs. From which direction? Um, you're guessing. Basically, it's hard to tell because you're kind of towards the back of the group. Hmm. Um, basically, it's kind of bouncing around. You're guessing either south or southwest. Okay. Um, Whitaker will whisper to the group, can we move into that room? Yeah. But we'll have to wait for Bax since Bax is first. Um, yeah, Bax is going to move in. Bax can't move her own character. Bax can't move her own character. <laughs> Vax is stuck. <laughs> oh no. One second. I wonder how that happened. Vax is very closely examining that first tile to make sure there's absolutely <laughs> no traps. Oh, there we go. That's weird. Um and Vax is uh, feeling a little suspicious about this area in the middle that's a different color. So I'm going to stop in front of the change of color tile and I'm going to hit it with, smack it with my tail. Okay. What is everyone else doing while? Just going to give it a flick. Whitaker uh -huh. is <clears throat> waiting as patiently as possible to get into the room. I mean, you could just kind of drag through other people, I believe, at this point. So, um, Well, okay, but... I'm just making sure there's actual room to pass people on these stairs before I take actions. People are basically like, people. you can always get past people if they aren't, if they, if people wish to stay in a square, you can always go through. They're five foot squares, so it's always considered you have some room. Unless so it's now still that... enough. Now that Whitaker is in this room, can she tell for sure which direction it's coming from? Give me another perception check. And uh, Bax, give me an attack roll. For tail, in particular. Tail whip. Now, are you attempting to, like, tap it? Like, are you attempting to tap it lightly, or are you cracking into it relatively hard? Trying to. I'm giving it a flip to make sure that the tile isn't trapped. Like, I'm not, like, necessarily trying to break tile or anything. Okay. Give me a stealth roll. I'm about to alert the entire company, aren't I? <laughs> Did it? Did that was it. just a GM trying to make everyone paranoid, mm -hmm. like it's the '90s or something. I mean, I could basically. I have a copy of Paranoia. It's out in the front room. Um, mm -hmm. hey, that's a future game. Um. In any case, so basically you kind of lightly tap the tail, uh, I'll tap the tail, uh, 
tail tap the tile. Uh, it just kind of clunks. Um, basically, you happen, she happens to do that, or they happen to do that at exactly about the same time as uh, basically you hear. So basically, Nick, you can hear. So there is some more kind of faint shouting. It definitely seems to be coming from this direction here. Uh, great. I had to choose this side, didn't I? I was looking away. Can you tell me again, please? The southern a door. Thank, thank you. The door close to Nick. <laughs> Nothing the so, himself near the shouting. Whitaker will whisper to the others. <clears throat> There's sounds of training coming from that south door. I will head towards the south door. With I'll my... stand beside the door and gesture people to go on ahead boop, of me. Boop, 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 boop. Um, whenever y'all ready, I'll open the door. Did you check it? I mean, I'm a fighter. I will check it for traps. Because <laughs> <laughs> if, if you don't check it, I will. I'm uh, just getting away from the that... door. There you go. I check it for traps. Give me a perception Or check. to see if it's locked. That too. Mostly for traps. Okay. As far as you can tell, it's just the door. And I will open just the door. Okay. Nope, not that. What is that? Why? There we go. Okay. Um, so you all see. Um, Um, basically, it's a room full, basically full of uh, several stone pillars, each that stand about four feet high, each one topped with a fire pot containing red hot coals. Um, basically, that's what these are here. Oh, wait, come back here. Actually, you can't see that ping because I'm on the wrong layer. That's what these are there. There are basically multiple of them throughout there. Um, each of them bears a recently uh, carved inscription. Uh, the first one you can see right here um, is an inscription that reads, Forgiveness is weakness. Oh, dear. Um, and you can hear basically, uh, basically, basically, kind of basically hold the pose, basically keep it to keep the legs straight. Basically raise the hands, watch your balance. Ignore the face, ignore the face, ignore the burning, ignore, basically, center on yourself, center. There's a, basically a female voice, and there's some the kind of vague kind of gravel kind of crunching sounds and a oh, muttered God. cursing. <laughs> Coming from uh, the, basically, from the western side of the room. Hmm. Detect magic. Look around okay. carefully. Okay. From where you are currently? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, give me a stealth check. Stealth check? Yeah. I'm seeing how loud you are when you're chanting. Um, okay. Um, so you kind of 
basically, basically, quite, basically relatively quietly chant under your breath. Um, and uh, basically nothing in the room you are currently in detects as magical. Nothing in here. I'm gonna Bax, you'll hear what like, you'll hear kind of a what? Basically kind of did you hear that? Uh coming from the non uh non female voices. Actually like what basically they're basically from the basically from the two of the voices which are not the instructor's voice, rather. Because one is male, one is female. Detect magic as a pulse, so I can't just keep it up. I so will, let's go, you hear, uh, let's go, you'll hear the instructor kind of snap. Focus, focus inward, not outward. Inward. I will start sneaking in very quietly. Okay, give me another stealth check. You are yeah, these. Are, this actually, can, this actually does qualify as rubble, essentially. So, uh, this does trigger your. Um, I think you have it on your character sheet. I have terrain stalker rubble. Yep. That gives you a. So that gives me a plus two, I think. Hold on. Um, sneak in certain terrain without attempting a check. Select one type of terrain. Oh, so I don't have to attempt do the check. Okay, yeah, right. You don't have to do a check. So. Mm -hmm. This also allows you to automatically approach creatures to within 15 feet while avoiding notice during exploration as long as they aren't actively searching or on guard. Okay. Uh, so you can... As, as long as you move no more than 5 feet and do not move within 10 feet of an enemy at any point during your movement. So you can... Basically, <clears throat> within 15 feet of her... But you right... So I uh, will... Very slowly. So from here, I can see them, right? Yeah, basically, you what you what you essentially see is um, there are three people in the room, um, all kind of dressed in basically kind of loose, kind of flowing, flowing type outfits. Uh, outfits. Um, the one that is towards the north end of the room. Um, is very effortlessly, or at least to, to your opinion, essentially standing in a uh, basically in a pile of burning coals, uh, which looks to have been basically an overturned, basically kind of uh, uh, basically basically <laughs> fire pot. Yep, brazier. I'm always cautious when I say that because I've got basically I've heard too many jokes about the difference between brazier and brazier. Um, it's oh. actually a fire pot in here. Um, oh my! <clears throat> all right. <laughs> um, Flaming braziers are a whole different ballpark. <laughs> yes, yes. If the room is lit, if the room is lit by braziers, you have some problems. In any case, a fire pot, bra brazier, whichever you wish to call it. This game, several of them have been overturned, and all three of the figures are standing in them. Um, Basically, the one to the north is a muscular Vedrani woman clad in tanned robes uh, who sports a short undercut that leaves most of her scalp shaved except for a single braid on one side of her skull. Um, and basically, she's kind of basically like, okay, ch basically channel your anger, unleash the flaming talons of vengeance. Um, and the other two are clad and also a kind of clad in robes, but are more basically, they, they are less. Uh, less kept basically they look they definitely look more like training robes they're more kind of loosely tied and you can see they're wearing kind of more standard clothing underneath it you're fairly certain basically there's at least a basically nearby there there's like a scimitar and some hand crossbow and things like that um and they are definitely kind of also trying to stand in these uh Burning basically and these burning coals but are less successful at making it look uh basically apparently and focusing their anger uh than the one at the north of the room is. So I will very stealthily and slowly sneak back and tell them like what I saw. Tell the rest of the party what we have. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, do you think we can take them by surprise? I mean, there we're we're funnily in single file into a room. Like they have the advantage, but um. You want me to distract them? We could distract them. I mean, they're already playing with fire, so I don't think fireball is going to help in this. <laughs> <laughs> or we could assist their training with fireball, whichever. Fireball. Um. I mean, I can sneak in up to the entrance again and do. I can I think I can do like a sudden charge or something. Why, why don't Why don't you go in and get yourself hidden where you have clear shots? Everyone else, kind of stay close to the door. I'll distract them, and if it hits a fan, help. Okay. okay. Obvious, obvious, obviously, we're having this this conversation in whispers, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just Tony doesn't know how to whisper. Nick does. <laughs> okay, that works for me. Uh, that's breath control. That's not a breath weapon. Oh, and I now I, I just a... need to hope the dice work well with me. All right. Well, I will tiptoe very slowly up until this point. Um, she can see me all the way till we said she could see me all the way till here. So I'm going to tiptoe and then I'm going to mad dash and whack. Uh. Oh. I'm not distracting. Oh, you're distracting first. Okay. <laughs> what the heck? Fine. I wait. Get Rewind. yourself ready. <laughs> Rewind. <clears throat> Rewind. I mean, this sounds like how a plan normally goes in D and D. Oh my god. <laughs> or Pathfinder, or whatever we're playing. But... <laughs> that, that that sounds like that sounds like her right there. Oh my lord, Martin. Oh. <laughs> well, if we're gonna go diplomatic, then I'm going to move myself like over here. I didn't say I was gonna go diplomatic. I said I was going to cause a distraction. Yeah. He said, "Go get ready." All right, hold as on. Quietly measure. as possible. <laughs> Let me measure if this is important. Not once did I say anything about diplomacy. <laughs> Fifteen. I find diplomacy so I can... very distracting. All right. So I can put myself here and not hit the 15 on anybody. Nope. That's 15. I'm good. Good. All right. I'm good. Now I'm ready. I give right. you the cheesy thumbs up. Nick just kind of straightens himself up, takes a swig off a flask, puts it back in his pouch. Goes storming into the room yelling, what in the hells is going on in here? Oh, no. <laughs> You're not supposed to have initiates holding those coals this early. That is way too. What is going on? <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh. And at which point I do, 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 whack. <laughs> Whitaker comes into the room. Also follows. You know, I, I, I've I got these, like, really nice saving throw bonuses and stuff like intimidation and diplomacy and performance. <laughs> nope, let's just go smack them across the face. <laughs> it was a distraction. You just <laughs> have to work on diplomatic. <laughs> you said we weren't going diplomatic. I said wait until the shit hits the fan. <laughs> <laughs> she's like okay let's throw shit at the fan yeah. I, I guess and Nick just sees her rush in and goes 
Oh, I guess we're doing this. You said we weren't going diplomatic. We didn't say that, actually. <laughs> yes, you did. No, no. He said he didn't say anything about the diplomatic. That's what he said. Right. He didn't say we that doing means we're not. <laughs> oh, my dear God. <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> note to self must be very explicit. Yes, note to self, explain plan more clearly. <laughs> Unfortunately, and, the only plan I had was go out and I'll distract him. <laughs> this I had I it like I'm three. Character sheet. Bax is pedantic as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Are we sure it's Bax, though? <laughs> Are we talking character or player here? Little column A, little column B. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh my cheeks hurt. <laughs> you guys let me play a fighter. Like that's all I do with fighters is I just whack stuff. <laughs> Our team smash. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh dear. I don't actually have sudden charge, I don't think. No, I don't. Um, but I am going to... No, we decided I wasn't torching because I, I was behind uh, because whoever was behind we were letting it, yeah. We were letting Hawkeye do the light source so that yep. Bax could have her hands free. Yep. So I'm going to, I, I, but I can power attack though. Uh, because you unleash a particular powerful attack that cobbles your foe, but leaves you a bit unsteady, making a melee strike that counts as two attacks when calculating your multiple attack penalty. If the strike hits, you deal an extra die of weapon damage. If the, uh, I don't know, it's maybe not worth the power attack. I mean, she is pretty. Yeah, we'll do the power attack. So here's the power attack stuff, and here's the tail. Good night. Yeah. Oh. I will run up to her and I fierce as can be kind of like a bull in a china shop and just crack my tail and smack her right on the side of the head with my tail exactly like that one might say Meanwhile, Nick is doing the Picard maneuver, the face palm. <laughs> Are you sure? With, with, with a nice snap with the tail, you know, that nice, like, whippy sound? <laughs> like Zach Z Whipper. <laughs> I, follow, I follow that person on Instagram. <laughs> Hilarious. They he... are also no. on TikTok. Yeah. yeah. But I'm more active on Instagram. But anyway, anyway. Zaxi with the Zaxi. Okay. Gee, I wonder who could have done that. Oh, and then I will say something about focus the pain, focus the pain. It's fine. And oh like read whatever line she was feeding to her acolytes, I'm going to feed back to her. Focus inward is what she was saying. There you go. Focus inward, focus inward. Oh my God.
Oh, I'm sorry, thou I didn't hast, have the mic muted, did I? Thou hast unleashed the lizard. Oh, did you ask for initiative? I was in a different brain space. Oops, I should click on me, right? I was in a different tab of my character sheet. Oh, I forgot to click on me, sorry. Oh, I always forget to click on me, don't feel bad. Click on me. I guess I was already clicked on me. Mm. I don't know. And also goes on my initiative, right? Got it. I see. You might have to explain that more than <laughs> I'm doing my best. Oh. Uh, okay, I have a question. As I observe Bax tail whipping the crap out of this person, do I recognize them as the person we were sent to find? Uh, I have a zero on that. Oh, where do I find that? At the bottom of your skills. Uh, forest and scouting. Did, d I'm sorry, did the person who contracted us not describe this woman that we were looking for? I see. Okay, that's. Well, darn it. Okay. Um... So basically the only thing that has happened so far is Bax has gone in guns blazing, uh, uh, euphemistically speaking. Um, okay. I should unmute myself in the stream. I apologize to the stream. I don't know how long I've been not talking. <laughs> Oops. Right row. Hashtag just streaming things. Yep. Yeah. Good news is they can hear you, so they got to hear all the important parts. Whoops. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to click <laughs> that. Uh. Okay. I do I feel think... like I do need to. Uh... That's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, that's that's on point. Yeah. That should have been played when, five minutes ago. Where were you? <laughs> when Bax started it off. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, exactly. All right. I guess let me just look at one thing here. Go ahead. Mm. This is not these attributes, these skills are not useful to my idea. Darn it. Okay. <laughs> What are you trying to do? Well, 
Whitaker kind of just wants to knock an arrow, like half draw her bow and point it at the other two people in the room and say, don't move. Okay. That's a fairly standard intimidate. Yeah, which if you've seen my intimidation uh, stat, uh, wasn't as good as I wanted it to be when I thought this idea up. But we're going to try sure. it. We're going to try it. Okay. Here we go. You stay right there. Which one are you directing that at? Uh, she you points need to her... point to a particular one. She points her bow at the at this one right here but also glances at the other one to indicate that this is meant for both of them but she's pointing at the closest one okay so the most of the full force of her your gaze is going to land on the the top one okay the northern yes. one disciple okay. number one um uh, intimidate goes against that uh, so like he will pay attention to you um, and he will definitely move. As good. You'll definitely notice the fact that his movements are uh, slowed. As good. He, seems, as good. he seems to be somewhat frightened of you, but is still moving at this point. Uh, he is frightened one. Okay. Do I have more actions during my term? Yes, uh, that is a single action for you to... Uh, do the uh, I was going to intimidate. So you have two actions remaining. Um, how far can I move Otso? I don't remember the answer to that. Um, Otso has a movement of I think thirty feet. I will double check, but I'm fairly certain. Thirty-five feet, actually. Beautiful. Bear can move. All right, bear can move right here and just be nearby and and ready. Okay. And. I think that's it. I think that's it. Okay. That's a that's good. That's that's basically one action for you to tell the bear to move, one action for you to intimidate. So there is technically an action. You have a action remaining if you want to do anything. No, I think that we're gonna stick with that because. Okay. I can't think of anything else to do. All right. That top bandit is going to scramble, grab, hop out of the coals, um, and grab their weapons. So they will pick up the scimitar and the hand crossbow. And they will kind of hurriedly shove the... Uh, Basically, shove the scimitar into their belt and then load the crossbow, and that's their actions for this round. So they're there. Okay, Bax. I am going to uh, continue beating up on her while telling her to focus inward. Okay. So I'm going to. I don't know which one of these is actually better. I'm going to continue using my tail. Yeah, I'm going to continue whipping her with my tail. Okay. Um, tail attack and then... Oop. Okay. That is going to hit. So I will whack her once. I will come back on the backswing and whack her twice. And then finish up on the top of the head with a three. 
It's like smack to the left, smack to the right, and back to the middle. Okay. Actually, the third one will go straight for her nose, so I can boop her. She dodges boop. out of the way of the boop. Aww, I wasn't able to boop the snoot. She denies you the boop. Okay. Um, that brings us to Nick. Basically, she is decidedly looking unhappy about what's happening to her. Well, I, I, I see Disciple 1 pick up the bow and just shake my head and, uh, I don't know, not normally a magic user. Magic missile? Okay. Uh, we've been going for that. You're going for the one who picked up the bow. Yep. Um, so it is. Okay. And I'm assuming you're using the full three action version of it rather than doing anything else. Correct. And uh, then you will add all those up. Four, eight, 13. Uh, so magic missiles will slam into that, basically into that poor unfortunate soul's chest, lift him up off of his feet and throw, toss him backwards against the wall where he will crumple into a heap. Not moving. Oops. Not both of them. <laughs> Somebody had those linked. Yeah. I keep forgetting that. I forgot that. I forgot that uh, D20 likes, to, Roll20 likes to yeah. link characters with the same. They told the, you not to move. Would you listen? Oh, no. <laughs> Nobody listens today. Can you undo that? Thank you very much. No, maybe not. It's fine. Oop, the game is going to insult there. We'll stop that. What okay. did you do? It's like, no, no. Let's turn that off. It's fine. There we go. Oop. Yeah, it's off. He is still standing, if a little bit panicked. Okay. Um, at that point, it is finally uh, the poor abused uh, monk's turn, who is going to scream in basically rage um, and basically. Basically shout, basically shout that basically to the heavens. Uh, uh, that basically for. Uh, I actually need to double check the name here. Uh, um, basically, Pyresia, give me strength. Focus your reign of embers on me, and let me take revenge against those who have wronged us. Um, and she does do that. In fact, actually, as her basically her hand, her hands kind of basically kind of grip into claws and you start to see flames kind of flicker around them. Um, and basically all around her body, basically flames and smoke seem to stray, stride up, uh, basically kind of stripe up of basically all of her. And she screeches and the screech is almost like more that of a bird than of a person. Um, and then she slams into uh, Bax. What's Bax's AC currently? Bax's AC is 20. Okay, so 28 will hit, uh, but will yes. not crit. Um, you will take five points of damage, uh, which is five points of fire damage. Uh, Icky. And then she grabs onto you. Okay. And basically, you can see her start to kind of basically, basically start to like lift. Like she's going oh, okay. to pick you up. Um, How about no? Bad touch. That is no, her like... action. Hawkeye, you're up next. Basically, you see people go into the room with some kind of plan, and then it basically, you quickly, basically, like you see, you see people walk in and you see backs just bolting across the doorway. And then shouts okay. and sh so the the is is it uh, rubble the whole way or just the ten feet through the hallway? And basically, everything is here is like ruins rubble type thing, which is why I was giving her that. 
Basically, yep. this is, nothing in this place is in pristine condition. It has been abandoned for far too long. So I'm going to move to right there. And then I'm going to do a two action heal on Bax. Okay. Go ahead and roll that. Bax, get 10 back. Yay, back to full. And that's all three of my actions. Okay. Uh, the bandit, who's not dead. Wait, Bax, uh, I thought you were at 10 before. No. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah, she, she, she only took like four points of damage so far. It's like the oh, first no, damage. I have, 20, I have 20 total, so I don't you know. should have been at 15. Be. Well, you, should be, we... you should be healed at the full. You should basically, you may, yeah. not, you may have had damage from a previous session. There we still, go. <laughs> Got still it. on the character. It's nothing that's hurt her so far. Um, then the bandit to the south is going to basically, uh, basically shout, How? You killed basically you killed him. Um and uh actually here's a name. I didn't record the name in my stats, I just have bandits. Uh but in any case, um he basically shall shot you killed him, I can't believe you killed him, you madman. And is going to snatch up the uh, crossbow bolt, the, cro the hand crossbow, uh, ignoring the scimitar for now, will load a crossbow bolt into it and fire it at Nick. Jeez, what the hell did Nick do? <laughs> oh, uh, kill the other one? <laughs> kill the well, other yeah, one. Well, yeah, I picked up on that, but why not? <laughs> yeah. Nick be like that. Uh, what's your AC currently, Nick? Um, AC 16. And okay. hey, Whitaker told him not to move. He moved. I can't be responsible for that. <laughs> um, basically, she, basically, in her panic and shakiness, basically, she manages to just barely hit you. Basically, it gives you a nice one of those nice little scars, scar slashes across your cheek. Um, as it goes by, you take a point of damage. Single loop point of death. On my face. That's where I make my money. Um, money maker. And it, after that, it is Whitaker's turn. Well, when the uh, initial... His name was Ute. I forgot. <laughs> Ute? Ute. Y-U-T-E. Ute colon. Hmm. Uh, well, R.I.P. Ute. Speaking as a player. Uh, but as Whitaker, when Ute went down, she doesn't know his name is Ute, but when that dude went down... Well, she says this, you killed Ute, so... You... Oh, okay. They're fairly certain. Well, poor Ute... As soon as he went down, Wit would have changed targets to the other disciples. So she's going to go ahead and shoot. Uh, so she already had an arrow half drawn anyway. Had her bow half drawn anyway. So uh, Do you wish to make him spend an action to make him your quarry? Her, her, your quarry, actually? N no, I don't. Okay. Just firing away. Okay. When you say quarry, do you mean prey? Yeah, the hunted shot. Oh, ability. hold on. Uh, just to remind me, if I um use all three of my actions. Does that affect Otso's ability to move closer? 
if you do not give Atsu, you do not spend one of your actions to give Atsu two actions, um, the answer is basically they kind of hand wave the it can move forward, but is unlikely to attack. Got it. It, it, okay. will, it will kind of basically, unless you basically kind of follow previous orders. So if you were telling him to go that direction, he would head, continue that direction. If you're telling him to just to watch that bandit, it would continue to kind of watch that bandit, as it were. Okay, so if I use all three of my actions myself, Otto really doesn't do anything this turn. Correct. Does not all work right. too much independently. Okay. So, hunting, designating as prey is an action, and then hunted shot itself is another action? Correct. Okay. But it's an action that lets you fire two arrows. Right. Okay, then yes, I will designate this bandit as prey. Okay. And then I will use hunted shot, and do I just click it? Uh, don't click hunted shot. Basically, just click um, attack, and then short bow. Or basically, click short bow, and then click the number two. That's right. Okay, thank you. Hunted prey. So it's giving me a pop up that says yep. input value for hunted prey. Mm -hmm. Um. So this is not the second attack or a subsequent attack, so yep, should so I just, just say no? Correct. Okay. Um, and then click number two. Mm -hmm. Second attack. Got correct. it. And that properly applies the flurry ability that you have uh, yes. so that it doesn't basically move, move too much. Okay. okay. Uh, first arrow and then, goes wide, but the second one will slam home. Okay. And then you have the damage there, so we'll do two points of damage to him. Okay. Her, rather. I thought it was a her. It is a her. Okay. Um, and then with my third action, I'm going to send Atsu over here and let him attack. So then, what do I hit? Uh, Atsu has their own character sheet. He does? I believe so, doesn't he? Or does he know? Uh, I don't recall ever seeing one for him. Yeah, double click on the token and then, or double click, or click on the token. Actually, just double click on the token. That should bring it up. Mm, it just shows his token settings. Uh, left click on it then. Left and double, hold on, left shift and double click. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So he he only gets one strike on her though, right? Correct. Okay, so he's just gonna claw her. Yep. Thank you. She manages to dodge out of the way of that one. Basically <laughs> clutching the arrow basically in her shoulder, grunting in the pain. Um that guy on the ground is not doing anything. Here lies uh, Ute. Here lies Ute. He never did anything. Uh, then it comes to Bax. Uh, Bax, you are currently grappled. Uh, that doesn't have any major impact on your um, ability to fight. Okay. Then I will try so to boop her snoop. Essentially, you can't leave. I will try. I will retry to boop her snoot. Snoot. You're flat footed. Uh, That's right. Flat footed doesn't do anything for you. Just, just basically your AC is low. Okay. Um, tail whip at 25. Okay. And. Um, uh, let me check. This poor character may not, in fact, get to do any of her cool things because I think that puts her down. Let me check. Her AC is higher, but not that much higher, I don't think. 
status bonus increases to 20. Basically, AC increases to 23 plus 3. So 21. Um, but does not increase her any resistances or anything. Okay, yep, she goes down. She collapses on the ground, sobbing. Gasping then her I'm... Oh, so she, she collapses, but she's not dead yet, right? Yep, she's got main character syndrome, or basically main enemy syndrome, so she's not automatically dead. She's kind of lying on the ground. So I will tie her up in case we want to... Since, 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 since in uh, that way, we can her. have a chat now. What was that, Mike? I'll, I'll revive her and keep her from dying. Okay. Uh, there's technically still one person left in the combat, so. Oh, there is. Yeah, the bandits in the south. I thought everybody was dead. No, the oh, bandits in the south is. still alive. Oh, Yuke's, okay. Yuke's then friend will... is still here. Okay, then before we do all of that, before tying her up and all that, I will just so so I'm assuming since she's down, she drops me. Yes. So I'm going to move over here. Look at this one sternly. Oh no! Right, because that's the other one. That's not Otto, right? No, that's Otto. Where's the other one? Next to Otto. It's got a X cross on it. It does, but he's telling. That was us roll it's twenty up. being stupid. Oh, okay, right. okay. Oh, interesting. I removed it on my end, but it didn't remove it for you. Weird. Nope. No. <laughs> okay, and then I will. I will look at him sternly, and I will give him a wet willy with my tail. <laughs> Boop. Oh, Gross. that didn't work out very well. <laughs> <laughs> Too far. Too like, far. <laughs> like you stick it in your mouth first and you swing it towards him. You move it slowly towards, is... <laughs> towards, his e towards her ear and she's just like, what? No! And Can I make an away. check with that? <laughs> No, because you sucking at her tail no. managed to remove the little bit of fear she had of you. Because she's like, what? Why is this lizard sucking at its own tail? I'm confused and angry. Uh, Nick, you're up. I'm confused and angry. Uh. That's a whole mood. <laughs> confused, angry, slightly injured, grieving a little bit for the loss of my partner over there. And uh, now I'm just... I don't know. And, yeah, Nick is just like, ah, oh, by the... And shouts out to the remaining uh, disciple, do you yield? Or are you going to join Ye um, Yeet or whatever his name was? <laughs> Yeet. His name is Yeet. What, Yeet's? I mean, we did eat him to Jesus, but, you know, he did <laughs> I don't think Jesus existed here. Not in any, not basically, not in this universe. No, there are plenty of Jesus parallels, but to be fair, Bax exists on their own own multiversal level. Maybe she connects into other universes. It's fine. Um, give me an intimidate. Okay, there's your intimidate twenty one. Okay. <laughs> um. At this point, once she gets over the disgust of something trying to a lizard trying to shove something into her tail, shove a tail into her ear, um, she will quickly realize that uh, there is no purpose in remaining, and will drop her, uh, drop her crossbow and kind of try to back slowly out of the situation. Listen, I was just we were just following her. She was promising to teach us. It's it was it all sounded really nice. Revenge based things. And you could do cool stuff with flames and other stuff. I mean it didn't make sense. Didn't realize she pissed off an extermination squad. <laughs> it wasn't our it wasn't exactly our mission, but <laughs> Well, you succeeded at it regardless. Hey, speak for yourself. It's I can only speak myself because I'm the only one still standing. I'm still standing. Okay. I will uh, cross over and uh, apply some med medical assistance over here. Okay. Barely. 
Uh, she, uh, she basically just kind of, uh, basically kind of groggily comes back up and basically just kind of stares at, basically stares at you and she's just screams and just rage and just defeat. Um, basically just starts like, basically, basically, I thought I could do it. I thought basically, but here I am yet again on the ground. Some idiot standing over me. Basically, she just starts unwrapping. Basically, she's got these hand wraps around her hand. Um, she just starts unwrapping them. Uh, and she's just like, just like, I basically just basically starts flinging them. Basically, just flings them away. It's just like, I'm, I'm useless. I'm basically, I'm not a master of anything. I'm just apparently just, uh, basically, there's no point in what I was doing. I'm not fit to teach students or do anything, apparently. I'm useless. And she just kind of screams again and just basically just, basically just stands up and just starts just storming out, basically just kind of basically just kind of storming, basically storming out of there, storming away. Uh, no, uh, no, no. You're not leaving. You're gonna stop and talk to us. Or it's we like, could put you back down. He's like, what? I can't stop you. Obviously, what's the point? If you want to? Uh, they want to beat me up? Then feel free. I obviously can't in any way defend myself. I don't want to beat you up any further. I do need some information. So chill out. You storm in here. You slam me against the wall. You smack me. You did kill one of my disciples, <laughs> and then you just like, no, chill out. What? I have nothing for you. What could you put? What could I possibly offer that you would want? You uh, want to learn a well, useless martial art? I could teach you that. Apparently, maybe, maybe not. Though they couldn't figure it out. For one thing, we need uh, the look at the one her, who like, waits. Look within. <laughs> Whitaker will just glare at Bax for a second. <laughs> Can you? She, she will do it. Me. She will just kind of stare at you. That's it. That's the whole reason you're here. That stupid statue. They wanted yep. it back that yep. badly that they sent some people to kill me and my what? disciples. No, no. She gestures to the corner. We're not here. Didn't kill you specifically to kill you. We are here to get the statue. She came fairly close. She just kind of basically reaches into her clothes and pulls out a key, and like flings it against. Just kind of flings it in your direction. What Whoever happens to be speaking, she's like, there, key, door is over there. Knock yourselves out. Uh, Whitaker glances at Hawkeye to see if he has anything to say. I mean, are you done? I have words. <laughs> Can I leave? Or do you wish to humiliate no. me further? No, until we have a captured until so we've recovered everything we came to recover yeah. we're, we're you're you're here you're staying here if you try to leave you will be uh prevented from doing so by one means or another but that is not our intent our intent is to recover property that was stolen can you provide it for us after giving a description of it yeah where did what Does is this point key open she points to the door. There, doors open. I will go to. I will take the key, go to the door, and open it. Wherever the door may be. Did she put it a here. specific door? She, she pointed light. to this room. Yeah, you don't currently have any lights, so if you leave a room of light, you will. She points like either. Actually, she will. Actually, the correct door is there's a door here. There's also a door up here. This you'll indicate either one of those. Um, Whitaker will escort this person who has not introduced herself to us yet, uh, and follow Bax to whichever door Bax goes to open. Totally. Uh, Otso, by the way, is still 
growling slightly at the other bandit. <laughs> and uh the other bandit is pretty much just backed up against basically kind of backed up against the wall and is just kind of staring in shock. Uh anybody who has society can go ahead and give me a society roll. That no. is not me. Um, do I have to say? Oh, I've got a penalty on society, but it's not going to change me from rolling it. <laughs> and with a penalty, you did better in society <laughs> than I did with a plus five. I have a negative one. Basically, the difference is, however, she just glances at them and is just like, eh, and moves on. Nick, you kind of look at them and go, they remind me of something, but I couldn't place it. Like, they seem familiar. Glancing the, the, at the two disciples. whom? The two disciples. The bandits. Okay. Uh... Can we get Hawkeye down to uh, take care of that arrow in the uh, living one's shoulder? Get her taken yeah, care yeah, of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can fix that. Careful, this is going to hurt. <clears throat> Heal. <laughs> do you actually heal or do you just yank the arrow out and be like, huh, that must have sucked? Ah, uh, I will... Carefully remove the head of the put, push it the rest of the way through. Pop the head off, pull the shaft out, and then you know apply the appropriate medical care. Without actually doing any healing, though, just give me a straight medicine check. Then, yeah, of course. Like you know, we we might be a band oh, of okay. random renegades, but well, we're good, not evil. The good news I'm, is, I'm gonna hero work. point that. I'm gonna hero point that. That's real bad. <laughs> we can't let that slide. There we go. What it? It was. It wasn't technically. Good. What? What did you say? Oh, I said we may be a band of random renegades, but we're not evil. That's right. <laughs> that is correct. Does the person that started fighting during my distraction? <laughs> um, not. Not as. Not. Probably not as thought through as we could be. Mildly impulsive. We? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all followed along and continued the beating with me. Well, what were we supposed to? I tried to get them to not move. I was trying. So were that they were very trying. I agree. So which door are you going to, Max? The one she pointed to. Oh, she pointed. She pointed grade. out two. She pointed out two. One to the north, one to the south. Uh, I'll start with the one with the. Uh, I'll I'll start with that one. Yep. All right. Whitaker takes the woman with her and follows, but I don't know how to do that. Uh, you're going to have to drag her because she literally just sits on the ground and just refuses to move. Uh. Can we have Otto just pick her up and just carry her? I mean, I will bodily force her to her feet if I have to. Um, I apologize, but I'm going to have to drop off here in a minute. Okay, we're just about done here, so you won't miss too much. Give me an athletics check, Whitaker. Okay. You're able to pretty much just kind of she she fights you on it, but you're able to drag her over. This does okay. mean, however, your hands are full. That's fine. Okay, Bax is opening the door. You see a hallway. Seems to lead to another door. 
Um, I'm going to go down the hallway. Okay. I mean... This one is locked, but the key fits it. All right, I'm going to go down the hall. I'm apparently... Like, the light's not... I The light... Well, again, you don't have a light source, me. so... Oh. Unless somebody cool. with a light source follows you, you're going to have problems. Yeah. Are you guys coming? We'll steal Hawkeye. Hawkeye will follow, follow us. There you go. Bring Wait. his light source. Yep. Okay. I keep going. Basically, you find yourself in what basically seems to have been at one point a uh kind of a bathhouse um basically there are basically all the basically there are basically the, the these areas here that you can't see into are all bath wells um actually i can go ahead and read this since they are not supposed to be walls i misread this uh oops, there there you go um oh so these are like sunken baths in the floor yep got it um basically mm -hmm. you can see um an alcove along the north wall so basically all the way at the other end of the room you can see an alcove um that seems to have a couple of actually let's go ahead and throw torches on that because she would have had some light by it boop boop um, the statue is located up there, kind of on a dais on the other side. Let's let our reluctant friend lead the way, Vax. Yeah, let's. So Whitaker will basically push her ahead of her as we walk down the way. Okay. And she'll draw her <laughs> dagger to uh, keep her honest. Okay. So <clears throat> you're going all the way to the end? Uh, as we're walking up, Wit will say, you got any traps where we need to know about? Because you're going to hit it first. She just kind of stares at you. Doesn't say anything. I guess we keep going. Whitaker keeps pushing her ahead of her um, like up this okay. way. Uh, we keep going. I, I smell a rat. Like, this is not good. Yep. A wit <laughs> stops here. Yep. Stops there. Okay. Yep. And this is another big bath ahead of, or next to me, right? Yeah, on there's the a left. big, there's okay. the, the largest bath in here is to the left of you. Yes. Okay. Vax, are you going um, ahead? Is yeah, I'm going ahead. I'm just moving Hawkeye for the light, for the light source, but yes. Okay. Backs, as soon as you step there, um, basically, basically, there is a screech of a phoenix, basically a large bird, essentially, um, and a white hot towel in the flame bursts up from the floor right there. Um, oh, dear. And you will take... Um, and everybody within 20 feet needs to give me a fort save. Ooh, eight points okay. of damage. Nick, you're fine. Fort save. Why well, am I glad I'm just staying back and taking a drink? <clears throat> Where do I do a fort save? Uh, it is in the center. Above skills. Oh. Okay. Do you wish to use one this of your hero points? This is why I was says, pushing her first. You wish to use your hero point to re-roll that. You're fairly certain that's a failure. Yeah, I will absolutely use a hero point to re-roll re that. Okay. 
Okay. Um, both of you avoid, basically manage to avoid being deafened by the screech echoing throughout this room. Uh, does she? <laughs> Actually, I have to check her. We need to roll for uh, Hawkeye, too. Oh, yeah. Um... Uh... Is a, and is Otto out of the range? I can't. What's a... You said 20 feet? Yeah, I said 20 feet. That should be. That's out of the way. Yeah. Okay, She's good. fine. Like, she manages to do the split second before basically uh, Phoenix jumps there. She kind of crouches and just kind of slams her hands over her ears. Um, and everybody give me a perception check. Which is what I was going to do. Even me all the way in the back? Uh, yes, it'll be more difficult for you, but yeah. Okay. Okay, so all of you, do I have to move? No, I just want to move one thing. Yeah. It's like, you're going to move everything. You can't move one thing. Okay, you will see the shadowy form of a phoenix. Um fly from that location and then it will move over here and kind of bury it basically you see it kind of bury itself into the floor and then disappear uh, <clears throat> I turn around look at the uh, look at little miss evil butt and um, be like do you want another boop on the snoot Tell me where the damn statue is. I've had enough of your game. No, we can see the statue. You can see the statue. Oh. It's right there. I was trying to get her to reveal her traps. I knew she would have it trapped. All right. Well, since the phoenix disappears, I'm going to go ahead and grab the bloody statue. Okay. As soon as you step on that space... The same oh. thing happens again. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it, Bax. Bax is not blessed with an overabundance of intelligence, okay? I have a negative take one in intelligence. Five points of damage. <laughs> and everybody in 20 in feet much... has five points of damage. And everyone in 20 How much feet did I take to... last time? Also eight. five? Oh, you eight. took eight last time. Everyone in 20 feet needs to give me a uh, fort save. Within 20 feet? Yes. So that means I still have to. You're fine. Nick, are you basically just kind of watching this and just continuing to drink? This I'm just, it's it's causing me to continue <laughs> to drink. What are you talking about? Just out Ooh. of curiosity, okay, has she... Nick ever told Wit what is in that flask? Nope. Okay, go on. As a basically, basically, as a note, um, basically, Melita just basically that's her name, Malika. You don't actually know her name because she's never given it to you. No one's asked. Um, basically, just stares at Bax as Bax just walks forward to where you all saw the Phoenix disappear to the floor, um, and doesn't get her hands up to her ears in time and is now kind of bleeding slightly from her eardrums. But she just kind of continues to stare and just shouts, are you all idiots? I just shout back, nope, pretty much that one in particular. So I will walk up to the statue away from the damn square. Take uh, the Give statue. me a perception check. Oh, my lord. <laughs> this is the day we all remember when Bax died. <laughs> 
Where she falls, next, there next, shall next she be buried. Next, you are too busy doing the double face palm uh, to pay attention to this. Um, Whitaker, if you want to give me a perception check. Oh, sure. I would well. love to. Let me see if I can figure out what's going on. Uh, there it is. Okay. So both Baz and Whitaker, uh, you will see the phoenix fly from that space over to here. And then settle back into the ground there. Oh, crap. Whitaker will look at Bax and say, Would you stop moving? Okay. I, I will stay put, but I can reach the statue from here, yes? Yes. I will grab the statue and put oh, it in Lord. my bag. No, actually, before I grab the statue, <laughs> hold on. Before I grab the statue, I will drink the minor potion of healing that is in my bag. <laughs> okay. That's smart. Which gives me... You regain 1d8 hit points. You got three. Three. Oh, I got three. Great. Still better than nothing. Okay. Okay. I don't know. They wouldn't have been missing in the first place if you didn't step on the Phoenix Square. <laughs> then I grab the statue. Okay. I put it in my bag. Mm -hmm. And then I walk around the other direction. Oh, One no. One step. <laughs> Stop moving! <laughs> Just stop. Well, what am I supposed to do? Fly? Just wait, wait a second. For Pete's <laughs> sake. Okay, fine. I don't move. <laughs> Nick puts away the first flax, pulls out a second one. Dear God. Whitaker would like to figure out if any other uh areas of the floor that she can see uh, have maybe another trap on them okay give me a perception check <laughs> holy buckets all right uh perception oh sure now i roll a crap perception and also okay. is there water in these baths um there is a little bit of stagnant water at the bottom of each of them but not like they're not full of water now. Is they're, it about feet, to go... they're about five feet deep. To... They're about five feet deep. Um, basically, the water the water is about two feet. Basically, like the pools are like two feet deep at the bottom. Okay, so there's two feet of water in the bottom of these pools. Yep. Fine, I can go traipsing through the pool if you'd rather. It's kind I of mean, gross, but I'll give it like... a try. Maybe you should see if you notice anything else un out of the ordinary. Sure, lizard, I will try Lizard that. homie. <laughs> you can call me lizard brain. It's fine. <laughs> I deserve it. <laughs> I was going to say lizard girl, but then I thought that that was a little uh, unnecessarily diminutive. Oh, because that beats lizard brain. <laughs> I didn't say lizard brain. You did. I've met smarter lizards. <laughs> Any hoozles? That was a 21 from Bax. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. Lucky for you. Um, so apparently she did a, well, she did a much better job of hiding the runes on the, uh, basically the ones on the right side of the pool. She did a terrible job of hiding the runes on the left side of the pool. Um, and you are fairly certain, especially since you now can know what to look for, since you've seen it twice. Um, <laughs> funny how that works. Um, you're able to spot a set of similar <laughs> runes on that side of the room. I actually rolled a one for the stealth check for those runes. So okay, she was that's just terrible. <laughs> she was absolutely just terrible in setting up those runes. You know, no one ever goes down the left side if they're heading towards it, so. Good night. So you now know there are, basically, those are the only runes that you can see. Okay. Does Bax share well, this information with everyone? Yes. Bax shares the information with everyone and decides that maybe crossing the pool is safer because the pool doesn't seem to have shit in it. So Bax will trounce through the yucky, icky pool. 
That's all the pool seems to have in it. <laughs> is yucky icky? Is shit. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> And I will make some kind of snide comment of, didn't your mom, mama ever teach you not to pee in the pool? Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> and slowly but surely make my way back. Okay. Um, Nothing happens. Uh, okay. Out of the gods. icky, stinky pool. Uh, do we know whether this person has broken any laws? Thieving? Thieving. Yeah. Breaking yeah. and entering. General ass holiness. Indeed. Something like that. Uh okay. Um are there authorities we can return her to? Because if so, Wit will tie her hands up with her rope and we'll take her along. I thought she was already tied up. You said that you didn't do that. Oh, that's because right. Was I didn't abandoned up. So yeah. you're right. You're right. Uh, okay. Because this person needs to be uh needs to be punished for their actions, their misdeeds. So do. So I figure we head out of this little trapped hallway gimmick. I continue walking through pools since every time I walk through actual <laughs> ground, I get yelled at. <laughs> well, I mean, every time you walk through actual ground, you get blasted by a phoenix. One would think that would be deterrent enough. Okay. Uh, not so, smart enough for all that. That's like, just like, meh. Good news <laughs> is... um. You uh, just get to this point, Greenwich can return back to basically nothing else untoward happened. Uh, the bandit's gone, the other bandit is just gone when you get back there. Uh, they have grabbed everything and run. Um, deuces basically, later you will discover the fact that they were a semi well known set of bandits in the area, uh, known as the Mud Claws, which is why they look familiar to Nick. Um, Melka will basically pretty much be dragged kicking and screaming back to the uh, basically back to the Pathfinder Society Lodge. Um, and she will be told, and she will be told to shut the hell up, otherwise, she will end up getting booped again. She's <laughs> deaf currently and cannot hear you. And so you pretty much have to knock her unconscious. Otherwise, she just complains loudly the entire time. No, I, do, I don't do that much. I just gag her. Okay. Hmm. Um, basically, as you, basically she, you take her back to the venture captain. The venture captain just stares at you um, and says, well... I'm glad you returned the statue. Uh, thank you. You also you also will find like some other relics and things like that that she had taken as well and returned those as well. Um, okay. She just kind of basically she just kind of stares at Milka and then gets as well. It I mean it's the same that. Uh, wow. Uh, I would have preferred that she could have been persuaded to perhaps turn from her ways, but. Uh, uh, it seems that that is not likely to be a possibility at this point. Whitaker uh, glowers at <laughs> Bax right now. We were tasked to get the statue. I got the statue. What more do you want? Uh, Bax is violent. Take a shot. <laughs> as we are, basically, <laughs> I would like to gently remind you for future missions that violence may not necessarily be the only option as we as pathfinders encourage our agents to take and we do look for additional recruits and uh, basically allies where we can um but you have preserved the alliance here and so in basically i will basically you will you do receive basically she just she kind of hands over basically a reward uh for that and as he says, I congratulate you on a job done. Um, 
and qualifying. There's no word <laughs> well in the middle of this. Nah, yeah, no, it wasn't well done. <laughs> Normally there would be, yes. Um, I guess we will uh, take her back to the monastery and see what they wish to do with her. Uh, perhaps they will be more forgiving. Um, and with that, you will end this adventure. Uh, so congratulations, you have made it to the end of the Pathfinder Society Quest 2, uh, Unforgiving Fire. This is the third one. Um, I do think that these are only mm. worth one experience points each, so, uh, you have not leveled up quite yet, um, but soon you would be able to level up your character. So I hope you all have had a good time playing this chaos and all <laughs> there actually is just so you know, uh, you could walk in and she is willing to talk to you. Um, and she does put you through a series of trials to prove your worth. Um, like there's an entire sequence of like martial arts activities you can go through. Um, that is to say, however, if even if you do all of those, she still is upset at you for taking the stuff and attacks you. So you just kind of shortcutted all of that. Um, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yes. However, there there is an additional reward for listening to her and basically convincing her the fact that she's not absolutely terrible. Um, but um, we missed out on that part, let's just say. Um, Thanks, Bax. <laughs> <laughs> um, Who's Nobody to, listens to the social media manager. Also, Bax managed <laughs> to roll incredibly well and just put poor, poor Mika down before she could do any of her cool abilities like explosive death drop um, and blazing oh, talon surge. Um, See, I was right to just beat her to a pulp before. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even though I will admit when he said explosive and the next word started with a D, I thought that was going in a completely different direction. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Tony. <laughs> wow. And y'all were groaning at me for mentioning wet willies. <laughs> Speaking of which, come on, I got some chili getting cold out there. Yep. All right. <laughs> so you guys can go ahead and head out. I will go ahead and basically thank everyone for uh being here, both on the stream and in basically if you're catching this later on YouTube. Uh thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you had a good time, as much time as good, a good time as the players had. Um, and I had as well. Um, it's always fun dealing with these circumstances. Um, in case you are curious, this is basically the system I was using down below, which had all of the information for this adventure, um, is a system called Lorelink. It is the system that we are building to help GMs in build out these type of adventures. Um, it is much easier, for example, rather than flipping through a PDF back and forth and that, I could just go through here, look up the events, the details, and then link easily directly to the next one. Um, I can also pull up a map of the area and look through the map and click through to any of the areas. And I have the traps marked if I needed to reference them as well. Uh, so that made my life much easier in flipping through and looking at those things. So um, if you're more, if you're interested in that, there are several things you could do. One, you can follow us here on this channel right here. We are here every Tuesday starting at uh, five o'clock, more or less, as you see. Um, and we build adventures, we play through adventures, not just in Pathfinder, but in various systems, um, as Lorelink is not required to be built attached to any one particular system. Um, it is system agnostic. It doesn't require that you be playing a particular system. You can build out any game in any system. Uh, so if you wish to see us playing different games and different systems and how those work in Lorelink, basically follow us here. Um, and you'll be able to catch us catch us doing that at later time. Um, additionally, you will be able uh, to catch videos like this on YouTube, our YouTube channel. You can catch us there and be able to uh, basically see some of the, the past VODs that we've done in case you're curious about other adventures we've done. We just got done with Feng Shui, for example. Prior to that, we did uh, Vampire the Masquerade, The Dark Ages. We did Starfinder. Um, so we've done a, a variety of different systems and adventures if you want to see that, and we will add, be continuing to add more on there. And lastly, if you are a GM um, and are interested in this system, um, if you go to our website, you can basically sign up for our newsletter, which has information about all the interesting things we're doing, including upcoming conventions we're at. Currently, we are being, going to be at Origins, for example. And most exciting, if you wish to be part of the Alpha, 
uh, you can go there and sign up for that and get access to the alpha there. So all that to say, I hope you had a good time. Hope you got something useful and at least if nothing else, you at least got a laugh. Uh, and we will catch you all later.